No, listen, listen, Jim. I think when you when you're talking about a club that means so much, sometimes you know your emotions come to the fore. And, and I don't regret any words because you only have to look at everything that's going on at the club, and probably the way I described it is probably being kind. Um, you know, so it, it, it's a mess. It, it really is a mess. And um, you know, obviously we're going to we're going to chat about you know certain aspects of it right now, but yeah. You know, uh, Mr. Mashiri, I, I can't, I cannot fault him one bit for in terms of putting his money in and, and what he's trying to do, but it, it's drastically gone wrong. And and one of the reasons he, he has to first and foremost look at his own front door, and he is a, a major part of what happened. You know, and then you can you can start to dissect other areas of the club where. He, he's either had too much influence or he's not allowed them to do what they what they're and, and if he has allowed them to do what they've done, then they've drastically failed as well. Yeah. Are you, are you behind the sack the board protests, Alan? And you think those protests should be ongoing? I do. I do because this we've we seen the first of the changes yesterday. There has to be more. There's got to be. We, we can't carry on the way we, we've been going. The, the, the crazy... Policy. Well, I don't actually think he had a policy. The crazy way he's gone about spending his money um, from from the first day. We are um, dealing with the repercussions of that right now in terms of financial fair play. I think um, you were you were nodding there to what Alan was saying. Yeah. The crazy way you, you, well, Alan described it. I mean, if it, yeah. morning, Simon. Morning, Alan. Um, you know, the prof- the profligacy is there to be seen, and some of the transfers that have gone on when you're paying fifty million pounds for people like Gilfie Sigerson and you're getting your pants pulled down. You can look at some of the relationships there. You can look at maybe Keir Jurepshin's got too much influence inside this football club, and people are making decisions based upon what Keir thinks is best for it. And you can look at Mashiri. There's no doubt that Mashiri and Alan and I are aligned in the thinking that Mashiri is the culprit. If we want to be in the blame game, because that's the game we're in right now, attribution of responsibility, then Mashiri has to be the person that we point at. I think it's silly, and I think Alan's being a bit silly about the board, because if you understand the, the, the dynamics of a football club, especially a benefactor-driven football club, where it's not being funded by its own income, you will well know that the guy that makes the decisions is the guy that has the money. And the board will chip in with their two penny, and they can resign if they want to and walk away. But that means they're giving up their livelihoods. And most people in different professions don't just give up their livelihoods on the point of principle. It's the guy at the top. If you want to have a go at somebody, it has to be Mashiri. The guys that are on the board, whether it's Graham Sharp, who Alan will know well, whether it's mm. Bill Kenwright, who I like, but I don't think Bill's beyond blame, or whether it's Denise... It's Mashiri. Yeah. It's Mashiri's decision-making process that needs to be held I mean, to scrutiny. Simon, there Alan mentioned Graham Sharp. Gra- yeah. Graham Sharp's coming for a lot of stick as well. There were placards about him uh, mm. at the London Stadium at West Ham on, on Saturday. And yet yeah. Sharp's an Everton legend from the playing side of things. Jim, that'll never change. You know, I, I grew up, obviously, of an Everton fan, and Sharpie was, was one of my heroes growing up. You know, and he, and he still is. You know, and and and, and Graham's in a very very difficult position because you know yes, and I agree with what Simon's saying there, and yourself. You know, he's obviously in 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 employment, so he can't come out the way the fans would like him to 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 disregard the board and say him to say. And and I don't think Graham probably has much say in the matters. He's been brought onto the board in terms of a football opinion, but the owner went above. A football opinion, and brought Tim Cale in the discussions on the on, on on the Frank Lampard interview. You know, so that is total disregard again, which obviously goes back to to the owner doing what he wants to do. You know, but Simon, I would ask you the question. You know, you've been of obviously a previous owner yourself, yeah. And when when you look at the bigger picture here at Everton, I'm pretty sure like you wouldn't have, you wouldn't accept the people there now carrying on doing the job what they've been doing well again I go, who are you talking about you're talking about the board you're talking about the managers yeah, you're talking about, about the players the what are you talking about well we can't do anything about the, about the, about the, the players because they're all on long term contract yeah well you, you, know, can. So that, you can you, you, you can you can get them out of the door you can pay them up you can get rid of them you can cut your, you can cut your nose well, off to spite your Sam, face and get yourself we, out of the problems you've had, got you by getting proper people in the building we had a player with St. Thompson who was there and he was just happy to sit there on the bench yeah I know they put him out alone so at Palace difficult. I saw him yeah. you know 
even though we'd, we'd like to get rid of players, you know, in this day and age, it's very difficult, you know, to, to do that when they've got a contract in front yeah, of them. Yeah, it is. But you, as you as I both know, if you want to do certain things, you can do them. And then players will get will accept getting paid up if there's a deal for them that enables them to be freed up if you want to clear some dead wood out of the building. But if you look down the line of things, the only some of these managers that he's brought in, there would be would have been little resistance to the thinking behind it. Silva was a fly, and now Silva's found his feet, found his head, and he's now becoming a proper manager at Fulham. But at the time, yeah. I didn't like his conduct but I could recognise the fact that he was a manager that had some potential. You look at a lot of these appointments that he's made, they're not necessarily prima facie appointments that people would have been screaming at him for. With the exception, the one that stands out from everything that makes him makes makes me think that he's completely clueless is Benitez. Because nobody mm. in their right mind, in any shape or form, would bring Benitez into a football club where he's managed across the city and he is also probably one of the most divisive figures in football that will hold you out to dry as soon as he possibly can. But Alan, going to, going to your point about changing the board, you're not listening to me. The board are bleeding academic. It's academic. They haven't got any power. They haven't got any authority. They, they are put into positions, but they're divested of any authority because they don't control the dough. He does. Yeah. So yeah. he's the person that people need to be focusing on. And I don't think it's particularly clever, Alan, that you throw your hat in with the fans. Because what it does is it, it ramps up the narrative and emotivity. There isn't a queue of people to buy this football club. You might like to think there is, but there isn't. So when you start saying about sack the board, get these people out, and then do what? Who's going to pay the bills? You throw Mashiri out the door, what are you going to do then in the real world? Not the world that you guys live in where you can shout and bellow at people and haven't got to pick up the bills. The real yeah. world where someone's got to step in and bridge the gap. Is that fair, Alan? No, sir. I, I, get, I get what that's. So, so we just have to keep on accepting mediocrity in the terms of the decisions with the managers. I know we're all saying it's one person. So, what, so what, it, what, what, why are they there then? If the, if the owner totally disregards any opinion that they have, no, I agree with that too, because you're on this balancing line between airing your views and turning it into toxicity. Toxicity is going to get nobody anywhere. Ultimately, you've got to have a right as football fans because you're emotionally invested in something that's far more important than an owner that passes through. And I can say that as an owner that passed through, albeit that I supported the football club that I owned. Mashiri doesn't support Everton. He went in there because of whatever, and whoever's money is, whether it's Usmanov's money or his money or whatever else is going on behind the scenes, he's there for a reason. So people have got to be realistic about what he's doing. But the bottom line is, what is the benefit? What is the benefit of this toxicity? What is the benefit of vilifying Bill Kenwright from dawn till dusk? What is the benefit of putting Denise Baxendale into uh, uncomfortable situations, albeit it's slightly exaggerated from what I understand? What does that achieve? Everyone knows the view. This team has got to get out of this relegation battle and the players can't be given any more excuses to hide behind toxicity that gives them an excuse because it's them that's not doing their jobs. I totally agree, Simon, in terms of the players, are, players are, are, have to carry the same responsibility as the manager, and as the people above. But you're, you're trying to say that no one else is interested in buying Everton Football Club in terms, in terms of at the price what the owner might want. I, I'm saying, saying there's not a queue, Alan. They might, no, there may no, well no, be people who think they can nick it. Oh, you'll find those yeah. all day, every day. You can find people who come along and try and nick a football club. You can find tyre kickers like Peter Kenyon that will rock up and try to crowdfund something with everyone else's money. But if you want a proper fellow in there that's going to bankroll your football club, they're few and far between. Well, we we haven't got a proper fellow in there now, Simon. No, you've got a proper fellow in there with a doe, whoever's doe it is, who's probably slightly run out of it now. Well, yeah, that's another question. That's another question. Yeah, I know yeah, it is. Yeah. But the bottom line is, is that there does need to be some balance between venting your spleens and saying we need to keep this football so, club on a, on a slightly decent axis. So, Alan, bringing it up to date, if yeah. it's if it's Bielsa, do you back that? Do you back that decision? I, I, I listen. We just need someone in to try and. If we possibly can. Do you think yeah, Bielsa, yeah, though, Alan? Because I'm slightly worried about his ability to communicate. He normally likes time to build with the players during the pre-season. He ain't got no time. He's got to get them well, Simon, in their boots we've, now. We've, we've had an owner that, that doesn't communicate with his board. So I what know that. Would that make? Yeah, you know, I agree. So, you know, so in terms of communication, that's the one thing that this football club hasn't done. So, Very Alan, if true, it came down to true. Bielsa or Deitch, in what direction would you go? I would, have, I would probably have to go with Bielsa. Um, and I, I think right now, you know, having another divisive character is not it's not going to be the end of the world for Everton because we've already got one. Right. As, you know, as the, as the owner, you know, first and foremost, and I I, I, I listen, I respect Simon. I actually think he speaks a lot of sense. Um, 
you know, some people might not. <laughs> but I actually think he's got a, a great opinion and he backs it up. He's a clever guy. But Simon, I, I, I'm also, I'm, I'm not going to stop in terms of venting my words of, of whatever in terms of this football club because it means a lot to me. You, you obviously have a, a narrative from the bigger picture where you look at it and you're obviously you're a bright guy. But, you know, I, in my opinion, don't think these people are the right people. To I just think the balance board. is, I mean, if you look across the boards, I promise you, Alan, if you look across the boards in the Premier League and look at them honestly and objectively and not in the emotion of trying to compare and contrast what's happening with yours, you'll see that mm. most boardrooms are full of stocking fillers. It's the guy at the top that makes the decisions. There are very few people. People have made this big thing about Marina at Chelsea. Please give me a break. People make these things about people giving mythologies around sporting directors that are top draw. They're all the new breed. Most of the people inside boardrooms are relatively average. And because your team is failing on the pitch right now, it's amplifying how average the boardroom looks. But just to re-emphasise, Alan, and just before you go, you would mm. still back the fans to protest at this time while Mashiri's trying to get Bielsa or whoever. I would, yeah. I would, because I think there needs to be change from top to bottom. Alan, yeah, listen, thanks so much for joining us. Former Everton defender Alan Stubbs with us live. Uh, you can take out of that what you will, and many Evertonians uh, getting in touch. You want to give us a call off the back of that. Your your basic point, Simon, is, look, time to lay off Mashiri a bit, because he's still there and he has a dog. I agree with Alan. Alan is right. There is an element of what was fans supposed to do, just sit there and stomach it. But there is a balance between taking it in one direction where it's getting too toxic and another where you're, you're suggesting to people that we effectively need to make make changes. I don't believe that the board are entirely complicit. And that's not because I like Bill, because I believe that the owner is an absolute loose cannon yeah. that makes decisions based upon what he thinks without any real football understanding. And we can all be guilty of that sometimes, but six years down the line... It's not good enough. Okay. Uh, you can have your say on that. You heard that, that exchange with Alan Stubbs and Simon. You can have your say. 03717-22334-81089 as a pursuit of Bielsa goes on. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.